Wallace Henry Hartley was born in June 1878 in Colne, England. It is said that Hartley's father, Albion, influenced young Wallace to have a liking for music. Both Wallace and Albion had attended Bethel Church. Albion was the leader of the church choir, and Wallace played the violin and also sang in the choir. Albion's favorite song was the popular Methodist hymn, Nearer My God to Thee, which would become synonymous with Wallace's legacy as a titanic musician. In 1903, Wallace left home to join the Municipal Orchestra in Bridlington, where he stayed for six years. He later moved to Dewsbury, where he was playing for local orchestras, and in 1909, he joined the Cunard Line as a musician, serving on the ocean liners Lucania, Lusitania, and Mauritania. It was at this time that the employment of Cunard musicians was transferred to the music agency CW and FN Black, which supplied musicians for Cunard and the White Star Line. This meant that musicians on board the passenger liners were no longer counted as members of the crew, but rather as second-class passengers at the agency's expense. In April 1912, Hartley was assigned to be the bandmaster for the newest White Star Line ship, the RMS Titanic. Wallace Hartley boarded Titanic on April 10th at Southampton. He and the seven other musicians were given cabins located on E-Deck. They would supply the musical entertainment throughout the voyage. Usually, the band would split up into two groups to perform around the ship at various times and locations. For example, a trio may have played in the Titanic's cafe, while the other five performed in the first-class lounge. As part of the job, the band was expected to know the approximately 350 pieces of music in the White Star Line music book. They were permitted to play in the first and second class areas, but not in third class. At 11.40 p.m. on Sunday, April 14th, the Titanic struck the iceberg, sealing the ship's fate. After Titanic's captain, Edward John Smith, had ordered the Titanic's 16 lifeboats to be lowered with women and children aboard, the band had received direct instruction to move to the boat deck and play for the passengers so as to keep them calm during the evacuation. Survivors recall that the band played lively tunes like ragtime and other up-tempo marches and patriotic songs. This had led to one of the controversies regarding the Titanic band. Due to their playing music during this stressful time, the ploy may have worked so well that people did not realize the danger of the Titanic sinking. In the early minutes of the loading of lifeboats, people did not want to get into the boats because they did not think it was anything serious. As the decks began to slant more and more, however, it was soon obvious that the ship was doomed. After two hours, the passengers came to grips with the reality of the situation. There was not much time left once the clock struck 2 a.m. The band played on. It appears that right about this time, the musicians moved outside onto the boat deck as chaos was unfolding around them. Just after 2 a.m. with only 20 minutes left, it is said that the band stopped playing possibly to retrieve their life belts. As the ship went down, all eight of Titanic's musicians died in the sinking. This has led to the second of the controversies regarding the band. Did they play the hymn, Nearer My God to Thee? Many survivors have said that they did play it, while others said it was a similar tune called Autumn. However, Hartley was a Methodist, and the tune he would have known growing up would have been Nearer My God to Thee. In fact, there is a story that circulated shortly after the sinking that on an earlier trip across the ocean, Wallace was asked if there was a, a specific song he would play if the ship he was on was sinking. He replied to his friend that he would find no better song to play than Nearer My God to Thee. History won't tell us if Nearer My God to Thee was actually the last song played on the Titanic, but survivor stories do give credence that the song was at least played near the very end. Wallace Hartley's body was found by the recovery ship nearly three weeks later on May 4th. Two other musicians' bodies were also found. After the sinking, Wallace's father Albion received a bill from the music company expecting compensation for his son's lost uniform. Hartley's funeral took place on May 17th in his native town. It is said that 30 to 40,000 people lined the funeral route to the cemetery. He was buried near the church that he had attended as a boy. But that's not the end of the story. In recent years, it came to light 
that the actual violin that Wallace played on board the Titanic was recovered. It appears that when his body was found, a leather music case was strapped to his body and inside was the violin. The violin made its way to a music teacher and in 2013, the unique history of the instrument was made known. After being authenticated, it was sold at auction for $1.7 million, the largest amount paid for any Titanic artifact. Since then, the violin and the leather case have been exhibited in museums around the world. These are some of the pictures I took when I went to see the instrument when it was on display at the Titanic Museum in Tennessee in 2020. Thanks for watching Profiles from the Titanic.